TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but I can leave. You can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, dang, I didn't <laughs> wait. Right behind me, you see it. Little warning screen, just in case. Don't forget Twitch.com is where you can catch a live stream and things of that nature. Uh, don't forget we are on Patreon five days per week. You get me. Uh, let's get into the can't pay, we'll take it away, man. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Talk to me. Oh, if you're wondering why I haven't been streaming, I slobbered. That is insane. I got a new setup. I'm waiting for everything to come. And then I'm going to make my grand return. You feel me? Hopefully we don't have to deal with the, with this anymore. Alrighty, whenever, there we go. Research from a leading debt charity has revealed that Londoners are more likely to be in debt than anyone else in the UK. Dang, London. <laughs> hey. Burdened oh, by fun. low wages and high living costs, Londoners owe an average of over £12,000. More than 100,000 Londoners sought help in the wealth debt. Mm -hmm. I think this is the first time it's actually really been centered around London in an episode. Like, we ain't never heard Londoners in, in this show. Like, this is, this is the one. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Max Carraher are in Collindale, North London with a writ to collect over £1,800 owed in unpaid parking fines. Right, Paul, we are looking to collect £1,837.69. Oh the case began when the debtor moved into her flat 12 months ago. And when did do become a focal, focal, focal part of the show? Like, I, I, like, it's bothering me a little bit, this guy. Like, there's other people here that have been here longer that deserve, you know what I'm saying? 1,837 pounds and 69 pence. The case began when the debtor moved into her flat 12 months ago and failed to obtain a permit to park outside the block. They'll be all allocated spaces, won't they? Wait, how much does she owe? 1,837 pounds. And 69 pounds ago, a mule allocated a thousand dollars. So they never like, like where I live, let's say if I park here and I don't have the permit, they're gonna give you a sticker, a little warning. Then you do it again, they're gonna tow it. <laughs> You're out of there. They're not gonna let you drive up a bill. This is nice, wherever this is. The debtor began receiving multiple parking tickets, but didn't pay them. So the parking company escalated the case to the high court, and now she must pay in full today. Hello. Hello, Fatty. Hey, who is this? High court enforcement agents here. You wanna come up? Thank you. She actually let him in. You had so much power. Hello, miss. Sorry to bother you. Here to see Fatty Abe. Is that yourself? Hello, miss. Right. Um, my name's Max Carraher. Hi. My colleague, Paul Bowhill. We've been sent round. Would you like us to discuss it so your neighbours can't hear anything? You know what? Um, it's just I have to be at work at 11 o'clock. That's why. The reason we've been sent round is because we've got a high court writ for you. Okay. It's in regards to your vehicle's parking. I did actually try to phone them today. There's an outstanding balance of £1,837.69. Sure do, you, you do know about this? I, I've got the letter. As I said to you today, I was speaking to them, but there was no um, um, answer. Is there any other way you can come back to me and then we can discuss... 
and talk about it. Because I'm just going to ask you a word. This matter has been going on. The date of the CCJ on this was the 17th yeah, this of the 11th, 2016. I've got a disability child, but he can walk. So as long as he can walk, you're not entitled to a disability. But yep. sorry. Okay. I've been going through this so for I'll so take, long. Take, take a I'll tell you what, miss. You sit down, take a deep breath, and we'll, we'll speak. It appears that Fatia had been waiting for a special parking permit, but her application was turned down. This is, I don't so, get you live here, and they're asking you not to park sure. outside your house. Despite Fatia's dispute with the parking... My bad, I was muted. See, this is, I'm all over the place. I said, so where do you park then? It looked like you have to drive to get in here. Like, you have to drive deep to get in here. I didn't see, like, no street parking very close to her apartment. King Company, the agents are duty-bound to collect the £1,800 they came for. Can you pay anything for this, please? What do you need? Can so, I give you £50 at the moment? And no, then you can come back? No, we need to collect on the 1,830. Can I just speak to one of my family members yeah, if they sure. can help me out? That's no problem at all. Absolutely no problem. Take a deep breath. It's all right. Who are you going to phone, madam? I'm trying to find out a friend. Yeah. My brother's at work. Is I'm he? trying to ask somebody to help That's... me. Exactly how much can I pay today? Because we I'm need not... to collect the full balance, which is 1,800. This is why, I like, it... Okay, man. I don't like this guy. I feel like everything he does is just nitpicky and it's just like, brother, be quiet. Why? Who are you calling, man? Just sit down, take a chill pill, take a deep. Don't tell me to sit down in my own house. I'm mad. You feel me? And 37 pounds. Well, just, just give me a minute. Yeah, no problem. Uh, listen, um, enforcement, um, I, I need your help. Um, I need your help. When I see that a defendant is becoming emotional and they have been very genuine with me, I don't like seeing it. There are occasions where I do feel sorry for people. This could be the worst day for them. And if I can remain as professional as possible, then that's a job well done. 30 minutes later, oh. Fatia's brother arrives. Hello, sir. Hello. My name's Max, my colleague Paul. Yeah, I've already said well, I'm going to make the payment, but they want their money right now. The reason we're here is because we've got a high court writ. Max sounds like he's continuously reading a book. Like, he sounds like a, one of the best narrators in the land. You ever heard them e-books online that you hear? Like they read it to you? He could, he, he could, he could do that job easily. For your sister. It all seems to be going smoothly, but then a friend arrives. Hello. And he wants answers. Hello, sir. We've got a high court writ. I don't care. You need to step out. We're not going to be stepping yeah, out. Yeah, you haven't been invited. We don't have to be hired today. No, do I've to got a high court writ. I don't care what you've got. Okay, sir, so don't shout. I've got a high court writ. No, I am. You're intimidating. Look, I'm not intimidating. Yeah, look, I'm no, not intimidating. Get out. Get Everything's out. Like, not going to get out. Listen. Sorry. I didn't actually call him. So okay, that's what we're going to get Where did he come from? He wants some of Fatima so bad that he come in here trying to be a hero with a cape on. Brother, get out. You're starving. You need some Sprite? Obey your thirst, buddy. Thirsty you. Hey, so what would you do the removal? Have, have, a, have a word. He hasn't been invited in. You need to get yeah. out of this house. When, do you have a leaving? warrant to be in here? I have a high court writ to be in here. You have a writ? Is yes. that a warrant to be in this place? It's premises? a writ, yeah. So what we're going to do... Just hang okay. on. Hang no, on. is that a warrant? I don't hang care. On. I'm talking, who am I talking to who's dealing with me? Speak to, both speak to both of us. Speak to both No, no, no. I can deal with one of you. Okay. There's only one of okay. you. Okay. I have the right to pay anything for this. Oh, okay. She's crying. Okay. Okay. She's crying. Okay. How did it feel? How did it make you feel? You feel big. Right, I did nothing to make her cry. This simple case has taken an ugly turn. I've treated her with nothing but respect. No, 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 but you're yeah. in her house without Absolutely. permission. With permission. With the man in direct conflict with Max, <laughs> it will take all the agent's skills Wait, to stop his lady? hostility spiraling out of control. Things turned nasty. She's crying. How does it feel? How does it make you feel? You feel big. Now, the agents need to make their authority clear and get this case resolved for good. If you're instructing an enforcement agent, then the police have to come. They let them come. Max calls the police. He's um, going to enforcement agents enforcing a high court writ and we're being instructed. Could we have some units attend, please? It doesn't have anything on it. 
With an enforcement action, we experience a complete range of emotions. All of these things are just grist. See, now for Fatima is, has a different energy now. I heard this man, never trust the, what did it say? Never trust what a man says and never trust a woman's tears. Because it could be very easily capped to the mill. It's all standard reactions. So we just stay there, stand and listen to it until they run out of breath, till it fades away, and then we'll just return to the original conversation. The police are on their way, and with Fatia's sister now here to keep the peace, Paul tries to get the case back on track. Listen, can I intervene? His attitude is going to do nothing to help this situation. What we need is payment of this and we need to discuss how that's going to be paid. Yeah. Listen, he's just upset, but okay. please, can we sort this out? You need to give us the figure that you can pay. We will then contact the office. That's Put it to the client. We're going to pay you whatever we can. It can't afford to okay. be 1,800. Okay, yeah. right. If you listen to me for a second, we have to take the full balance. I can pay 500 pounds today. Okay. We need a bit more than that. But that's all I have. I, I, I just okay. told you. I swear to you. 500 is getting closer. It's, it's more than the original 50. If I had that kind of money today, the day I got the letter, I would have paid it. I just, I hate problems. Yeah. Paul has to make it clear that Fatia's £500 offer won't be accepted by the claimant. If we were to say they'll accept £1,000, are you able to make that happen? And then the rest? And the rest could you be paid £100 a month. But I don't have anything else. Okay. Nobody can just afford to give you money. They've been giving us a ticket like a week, twice maybe, or three times. So there are more tickets in the pile, there are more tickets in the pipeline then? Yeah, but well, how am I supposed to pay that when I'm trying to feed my kids and pay the bill? I don't know what to do. I'm not going to lie, this is a this is north side of London, nice little apartment, balcony. I see a flat screen. It seems Fatia can't get close I'm, I'm to the 1,000 pounds Paul has asked for. Finally, the police arrive. I told him I've got to work. Sure. And, and they didn't listen. I told him to come back later. Okay. I didn't do anything. But no, no, we're not saying you have, but at the end of the day, they're to do a job. Just let them do it. With the police present, Fatia's brother takes Max aside. Let me, I'll make a call for you. I'll make a call. The offer is less than the £1,000 Paul asked for, but it seems it's the best try. the family can do. Max calls the office. I, uh, we need kind of a quick decision on that, right, the bloke's offered 700 okay? Brilliant. Just confirm that's seven hundred and then a hundred a month. A hundred pounds a month, yes. Madam, I know how this has been an uphill battle and very stressful. Max, just stop, stop, stop. Oh my God, it just sounds so con contradicting when he talks. I don't know what it is about it. Like I, just, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> it has been accepted for the seven hundred. Because. Put the, uh, check them out, put your pin in for me, please. Fatia's brother makes a £700 down payment. And she agrees to pay £100 a month to clear the balance. We won't delay you any further. We can leave now. Thank you very much. Take care. The case is resolved for now. Thank you for your time. But it'll be another year until Fatia is free of this debt. That aggravation there went from zero to ten in a matter of seconds. Nothing was going to stop him talking. Yeah. There's no way. I don't... Listen. In a matter of seconds. Nothing... I'm trying to believe that she's broke, but this is not given broke. This, this, these apartments is not given. I don't have no money. It's going to stop him talking. It's not given a council flat. It's not given it's paid for by the taxpayer's money or something. It ain't. This is too. This is nice. Yeah. I, I fully agree with you. I don't even see not a kid item in there in that house at all. A recent survey has revealed that self-employed workers in the UK 
are increasingly struggling with late invoice payments. On average, they're owed nearly five and a half thousand pounds, and more than a third have either asked family for help or sought a payday loan to cover the shortfall. 40% of all self-employed people and sole traders sur surveyed took out a county court judgment in the last year to recover outstanding invoices. High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor. Here we go. This, this, see, this the, but this the group that I'm here for. Are in Accrington, Lancashire. Lancashire. They're hoping to recover a debt of over two thousand two hundred pounds owed to a shipping company by scrapyard owner Mr. Mumters Khan. What do you know? I do know he's not playing ball with us. Right. This is not the first time the agents have tried to enforce this writ. Last time they were here, the yard was locked up, and Mr. Khan was nowhere to be seen. We've got a lot of them standby in case we need to force entry. Oh, well. Yeah, that's how we roll. Nobody gonna say nothing about the horse? Well, let's go have a chat. <sighs> Once again, the gate is locked. But this time, the office door is open and leads the agents out into the yard. Mm. Hello. I am mate. We're after Mr. Khan. Yeah. That's me. Hi, Mr. Khan. We're High Court Enforcement Agents, sir. It's regarding an outstanding balance, sir, for £2,266. We're here to collect the balance. If not, we are instructed to remove goods, mate. I don't um, think this is going to go smooth. I don't have that much money on there. Well, but you need to see what you can do, mate, to try and raise something, because we'll have to remove, like I said, some of the goods in here. As Mr. Khan says he can't pay, the agents need to look around the yard. I see a tractor in there. For assets they could seize. Most of the cars here are of low scrap value, but there are several working vehicles, including an expensive forklift. Have you got documentation for That's these vehicles? Yeah, but have you got documentation for them? Not, not me. They have. So we should be able to get in contact with the owner of the vehicle so we can collect supplies for the receipt. Yeah, yeah, sure. So are you able to do that now? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. And the forklift? Forklift truck as well. Just whatever, whatever it is. It is. Yeah. As Mr. Khan heads inside to make some calls, Stuart follows him to look for any other assets that might be on the premises. But Mr. Khan has other ideas. Don't, don't be touching me, sir. No, no. Don't be touching me. No, I'm not. Get your hands sir, off me now. Excuse me. Yeah, well, you're not going in the office. Why not? Be, uh, no. Where's we are, sir? We've got a writ of control, yes, sir. Got a writ of control. Yeah. Okay, you want don't your touch copy? me again. You no, want I'm your not, copy? Mr. Khan. Yeah, we'll move yeah. out of the way then, Mr. Khan. Yeah. This document, that gives us the right to go in the office as well, sir. Mm. And check what? Well, Whatever we need to see, sir. No, no, you don't have to fucking check nothing. There's assets in there. There's assets in there. There's assets in there. Mr. Khan, Mr. Khan. Don't Khan. push me, man, don't okay? Push me. All right? Don't push I me. don't give a fuck who you are. So yeah. Just don't push your luck with me. At the end of the day, sir, you ain't going to stop me doing my job. You all right? Whether Mr. Like Khan, not, sir. you need to relax. You understand? Mr. Khan. Yeah. Stay there. I ain't going to lie. Stuart do be standing on a business, though. Like, Max, I don't feel like that's not happening. Max is never standing his ground. I just don't feel that. <laughs> Most people become aggressive purely down to shock. They're embarrassed, they've known about it, they've tried to hide away from it, but they've got to realise that once we turn up at that address, we're not leaving until that writ, that writ has been executed to its full force. With the agents shut out of the office, Vic tries to reason with Mr Khan. So at the end of the day, it is a writ of control, and you need to understand, we have the right to go into that office. Look, I'll show you on the document. What is it that you want from the office? Come on, what is it? I, mean, I need to, we need to look at, look, sir. Yeah. First of all, yeah. we want to get payment. Yeah, I understand what right? you're trying to get payment. We, we want to get payment, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll leave the door crazy. open. What can you pay today, sir? I swear to God, I cannot make any payment. I just don't mm -hmm. have the money. So we're going to have to take control of goods, sir. So. Give you my bank details online. I'm telling you, I'm overdrawn and I'm already struggling. 
I, I understand that, but you, you can understand they obviously don't want to wait anymore. Yeah. Wait, what's his name? Is this it's Stuart? Yeah, Stuart. Stuart McCracken and Elmer Fudd. That's why they've gone through the high court. I don't have a choice, have I? I don't have a choice. I've got so many people, you know, asking for money. It seems that Mr. Khan's business has fallen on hard times. But the agents still need to get this case resolved one way or another. So the forklift outside, who does that belong to? That belongs to me. Is that yours? Yeah. Right, okay, I'll the truth. Then. Whatever you need to do, do it. Mr. Khan has changed his story. The forklift is his after all, and the agents now have an asset they can seize. CT54. Stuart calls the office with an update. He's got a forklift truck here. This forklift truck, mate, is, is a weight. All right. But inside, the prospect of losing his work vehicle suddenly prompts Mr. Khan to start negotiating. Yeah, you lose that, it's over. We need that. That's the heavy machinery, ain't it? If you give me till tomorrow, all right? We can't, sir. Yes, you can. You know, £500, pound, £400, pound, I try my best to at least get that much and say, here, mate. Right, okay, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. And I know you're gonna to say to me, no ways, but if you can get to a thousand today, listen to me, no, no, listen to me. You know. I know, but this is this is a, a lifeline I'm trying to throw you. Well, I, mean, I know, I sir. Know, I don't know who's... Like, I can tell you now, they won't take less than a thousand. I'll phone my brother up and say, what do you know what he says? Once people open up to you and you've been their trust, it makes, you know, it makes the job a bit easier because all of a sudden you've got communications going and that's what we're there to do. We're there to resolve the matter. And if people don't talk to you... After the storm, there's, there's, there's sunshine. You can't resolve the matter. Fifteen minutes later, his brother arrives. Hello. After talking to him, Hello. Mr. Khan makes another offer. I'll lend you a thousand. Right. All right. So you can get a thousand pounds today. Yeah. Right. I'm not saying they're going to accept it, right? But I will make the phone call, okay? Vic calls the office to see whether the claimant will accept a thousand pounds today, together with a plan to pay off the balance. They're going to say no. Hey, Tom, you're right, mate. You can get a thousand pounds cash now, or tra bank transfer. Just can you run that by the claimant and give me a call back? Okay, wait. Mr. Khan, they're going to phone the claimant down and give me a call back, all right? At the end of the day, it's up to them. I wish it was my choice, but it's not, I'm afraid. If we can see that someone is genuinely trying to rape... I don't think this even would bother me if this happened to me. I'm at a place where nothing really irritates me in life. Especially when it's out of my control. <laughs> like, at one point it was in his control, now it's out. Like, all right. It is what it is. Raise funds. We will work with that person. We will always try and help someone that is trying to, to help themselves. Moments later, the office calls back. They don't accept it now. Full balance. They, they're not Told accepting you. it often, Mr. Khan. They want the full balance. Mm. I'm just going to go home. Mr. Khan? Mr. Khan? How long will it, how, how far is it? Okay, okay, no, that's fine. It seems that Mr. Khan has gone to try and raise the rest of the balance. <clears throat> oh, okay. While they wait for him to return, his brother opens up to Vic. I thought he just Obviously, it's a hard belief for you, but we've got our own life as well. Yes. Yeah. If I come here and help him for a couple of months, I'll be in trouble. We're survivors, man, you know. Yeah. We're all school survivors. Early. 20 minutes later, Mr. Khan returns to the yard. There's, there's one of my mates who's transferring the money into my account. Okay. <clears throat> so someone's going to transfer money into your account now and you'll pay us on the machine. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Mr. Khan has managed to raise the £2,266 he owes and he pays off the debt in full. Right. £66. Pounds he owes. Not bad. And he pays off the debt in full. Right. That is the end of the matter. All the best for the future, yeah? 
the agent's perseverance has paid off. Bunch is on you, ain't it, Vic? <laughs> well, now he's in debt to his friend, though, right? His home homie. <laughs> it might be worse. Whoever gets it paid is the one who gets lunch. Stuart and Vic got a result against the odds. But in Steve and Ben's next case... Uh, don't you dare. Evictions by private landlords remain the single biggest cause of homelessness in England. In 2016, nearly 20,000 households became homeless after being evicted from privately rented properties. 286 evictions orders are granted to landlords across the UK every day. Nine a.m. High Court Enforcement Agent Steve Pinner and son Ben are in Bayswater, West London, to carry out an eviction. Nice, pretty square. Tenant Cynthia Fubang Chia. Oh no, it's not Max. Is it Max or is it Ben? I don't. Either one at this point. Had been renting a flat with her daughter for six years, but when her tenancy came to an end, she refused to leave. Um, there is no. No, 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 it's Max. It's not Ben, it's Max. It's on this order, it's purely an eviction. Ms Chia repeatedly ignored eviction notices from the county court, and after months of trying to make her leave, the landlord escalated the case to the High Court. This is a parking space. Well, this is us sorted. But this eviction will be far from straightforward. No one's in at the inn. What do they mean by that? Ah, sir, good morning. Sorry to disturb you. We're trying to get into flat seven. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you. He probably can't stand them. Madam, can you open the door, please? My name is Ben, High Court Enforcement. We're here to evict you. Are you serious? Absolutely. Can you call the court, please? I'm appealing this decision. It's been transferred to the High Court, and the High Court eviction order has been issued. So what's going to happen now? You have one hour to pack your belongings and leave the property. Let me just... Can you come in, please? Yeah. I feel like we ain't seen one of these in a minute. It's been like a... Is it just me? We ain't seen them put nobody out of their house in a minute. Like, just come to collect stuff for like a long... For like a few episodes. Not for like this whole season. We ain't seen this. Ms. Chia claims she's in the process of appealing the court's decision. You can't appeal. What is there to appeal? Your lease is done. They wanted you out. There's nothing to appeal. And the agent's visit has clearly come as a shock. They didn't send me a letter. They've sent you numerous letters. And the claimant is still receiving payment. He's entitled to, for you to pay him rent. Yeah, but he's receiving full bit, so how can he then do that? Of course he can, because the court has ordered you to leave and you no, failed to leave. He hasn't. Oh my God, this is not fair. Can you wait outside and let me do what I, I can do, please? Because I'm just confused. Let me... A lot of the properties we go to for repossessions are... If you didn't re-sign a lease, you shouldn't have been paying. Like, that's, that's like... Just because you paying doesn't mean they're going to be like, oh, you know what, just leave her. No, they want you out, they want you out. <laughs> You should have been saving that money so you can go somewhere Our else. challenge is because the people in the properties think that, you know, why are you evicting us? This shouldn't be right. You can't do this. Obviously, the process that has gone through enables us to do it, but they're just in denial. Ms Chia has only an hour to pack her essentials and leave, but instead she's on the phone to the courts. What can I do in this situation? You've got to speak with the enforcement officer. <laughs> Madam, you not do realise your time is running out. My fault. I'm telling you, I'm explaining That's something. That's not funny, but you can't do nothing. OK. You're, I, not, you're not listening. No, you're not listening to me, madam. I want to really explain to you. At 10 o'clock, you're leaving this property. OK, can I... Yeah. You've got to take your stuff. With Ms Chia not cooperating, Steve somebody. changes tactics. I'm going to call the police yeah, and ask them to come. Veteran move. You're calling? Yes, I'm a High Court Enforcement agent. Uh -huh. And uh, I'd like an officer to attend a property to explain the authority that we have in a repossession order. Okay, I will try and get something out. Thank you very okay. much. You're 
welcome. Okay, the officers, the police officers are on their way now. I haven't committed any crime. You're obstructing me, madam. No, I'm not. You've got to take your stuff. Can you please just No. Down? I'm not locking the door. Madam, we're not leaving the property. This is property is no longer yours. 15 minutes after they were called, the police arrive. Welcome to the fun house. Cynthia, yeah. there is no more argument, OK? We'll need to be as quick as you can, please, because otherwise you're going to be obstructing these very nice gentlemen in the law flex kit. Well, she put that 40-inch bus down on, you see her? She had to get her, her, her top piece together. That's what was taking so long. You think that your ease, all right? Yeah. Cynthia, we need to go. Yeah. Are you going to lock the door? I am going to lock yeah. the door. What keys do you have? With the police present, Ms Chia finally leaves. She now has seven days to arrange with her landlord to pick up the rest of her and her daughter's belongings. All done. Lock, lock the door, please. Let's get out of here. The eviction appears to be complete. But five months. That's what I was about to say. What you mean appears? Months later, five. the case takes an extraordinary turn, and Steve and Max are on their way back to the same flat. She made an arrangement. Five arrangement with the landlord to come back and collect her stuff. It never left. And when she got into the flat, she locked the landlord out. The landlord applied wow. for another repossession order. But before the new writ was issued, Ms Chia secured a court hearing where the landlord agreed she could stay in the flat for three more months to give her time to find somewhere else to live. Yeah, it's there because we parked at the... Um... Why would you do that? So she gave you the uh-oh, two-step, I'm in, locked you out. Before you could get a writ, she took you to court, achieved another three months. Once that was up, she's still in here for two more months. Oh, my God. But he's there last time. But I wouldn't agree to anything. Three-month extension has now expired, and Ms. Chia is still there. So the agents are back with another writ to evict her for a second time. Change she has got to go. She stayed well beyond her welcome. <coughs> <coughs> This job never ceases to amaze me. This In my enforcement career, I've never heard of a case where a tenant needs to be evicted from twice. the same domestic property twice, ever. You're still kind of new, so... He is locked. Somewhere. Hello? <laughs> High Court Enforcement, Miss Chia. I'm an enforcement agent with a high court writ. For what? To repossess the property. Could you open the door, please? I'm saying this because I have possession up until the 1st, 1st of April. And uh, what's the date today? He has to make an application. Today is the 3rd of April. Cynthia, are you going to open the door? Going away. Open the door, or I will open the door. You don't have the correct papers. It's not crying in the door. Madam, I can hear that there's a child in there and the child is clearly distressed. Yes, we please. definitely don't want to distress the child. Go away! Go away! Go away! Go away! You're not allowed. I don't feel bad for her at all. I feel bad for the child that her mother is like this. But I don't feel bad for this lady. To be here. You don't have a... If you obstruct us, it's a criminal offence, okay? I'm not obstructing. My daughter is behind me. I think it's absolutely unacceptable that as a parent, you would put your daughter in the way of the door, okay? Concerned for the child's well- Don't feel bad for her at all. Oh, mom. Fair. Max feels he has no alternative but to call the police for assistance. Hiya. Um, we're enforcement agents. We've got a high court writ of possession. The defendant is refusing to leave and we have concerns for the welfare of the child. They're gonna be there in five minutes. Possible. Thanks ever so much for that. Right. Bye. Bye. Cynthia, can anybody who will put their child as a shield anyway? Like, yeah, I, I, I got genuine concerns too. It may sound little, but like, 
You might do this in a more severe circumstance. You hear me, okay? The the police are coming. Yeah, but why are you calling the police? Why? Because honestly, I'm concerned for the welfare of your child. For what, what welfare? You told me you put the child in front of the door. I I haven't put. She, I said she was standing there. Can you come back tomorrow or something? Absolutely not. Okay. Then. When children are presented in front of us, when we're enforcing a writ, their interests come first. Shouldn't have never a lot said of us that. Have children. We heard you. With fathers, the last thing we're going to do is put any of them in danger. That's the police. Minutes after they were called, the police arrive. Oh, thank you for coming. Right. Thank Okay. Now they've come. All these rich, there's the ones they're telling you. They have a high court rent. Mm. They say that you must leave the property. From where? Can I see? The, the gentleman. I don't have the gentleman having me. What are you using to evict me? You know you don't have me, and you know you're just trying to cause the police. Um, to listen. Have, you don't have with them. the greatest respect to you, I can't afford to make a mistake in being here for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Cynthia, yeah. may I speak okay. to you? You'd still need a rig. You cannot just come to my door and evict me. Where is your order? We went back to court and got a rip. Okay. This rate gives us immediate effect. Can you call the high court? No. She needs to go. Right, right. right. Officer, they're just trying. Yeah, man. The, 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 the patience is wearing thin. You got a whole new 30 inch bus down on your head. Get out. I know that they don't have the. I'm sorry, okay? It, it doesn't pay that they do, okay? So you need to start listening to what these gentlemen. I, I, I feel sorry for the daughter, but. I appreciate it's upsetting and it's not ideal. You need to think about your little girl. This isn't nice for her. So I should go back to court now, is that No, you need to take your belongings in there. No, I will go back to court because no. I don't, that's what I'm going to do. You need to take your belongings because I don't have any grounds. I am here to uphold the peace, okay? And at the minute, you're obstructing these guys from doing their job. Would you like the rest in quite simply? Yeah. No. Then I'm sort your stuff out. Put your phone down and let's get going. You just won't. How can they have me for no reason? Mommy. He doesn't have, he doesn't Mommy. have the, the, the... No yes, reason? Yes, he does. And he does. I'm to leave. Right. We're going now, okay? Right, okay. Mommy. Let's go. Come on. Lovely. Okay. Thank you. We done? With the... Landlord can't be that's the nice guy again. It's a Help of the police, Ms. Chia finally accepts that she and her daughter have to leave. Thank you very much for your help. I do appreciate it. Take care. <laughs> now homeless, it will be up to the council to provide them with emergency. Did she? This is the daughter? Was it me or did it sound like a, a two-year-old, three-year-old, two-year-old, one-year-old? She played a YouTube sound. This is a grown woman. This is a this is at least a twelve year old. She played a baby noise. Agency accommodation. I know she did. That's why. Well, that's us done anyway. Thank goodness for that. That is secure. Two visits and two police callouts later. The case is fine. What's stopping her from like getting a locksmith and just going back? Really resolved. Oh, do you think that's the end of the, the matter? No. Oh, I do hope so. I couldn't take another one of those. People are just unreasonable and unbelievable, aren't they? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Research has shown that over 70% of small business owners in the UK feel that cash flow poses the biggest risk to their livelihoods. Cash flow problems affect four in 10 small businesses and nearly a third struggle to meet debt repayments as a direct result. The number of county court judgments against companies in England and Wales rose by over one third in the first quarter of 2017. It's hard out here. High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in Birkenhead, Merseyside. They have a writ to recover over... You didn't went to Liverpool? 
£35,000 owed by a publishing company to an ex-employee. How much? Owed as he side. They have a writ to recover over £35,000 owed by a publishing company to an ex-employee. Wow. Yo, oh, yeah, definitely. I would never let up as that ex-employee. I would never. I want my money. Sunshine. Close the doors down then. Rename the company my name. Invest. It's mine. We're at Birkenhead. Where are we going? Uh, we're going to visit this morning on the sunny day mm. the Henne Partnership Limited. Mm. The claimant took the company to court, alleging he was unfairly dismissed. And the door's open. I feel it. You won 35 bands. <laughs> you feel me? I feel like if you get fired from your job, you should always figure out if you can take them to court. Because nine times out of ten, let I me mean, not say nine times, like six times out of ten, they on some, they on some, they on some funny business when they let you go. He won the case and was awarded compensation. Looks like an intercommentary mate, do you want to jump out? <sighs> now, company director Steve Russell must pay the claimant what he owes in full today. Or the agents have the right to seize assets to offset the debt. 35 Hi, is crazy. Hi, partnership limited. Thank you. Look, he's trying to play off like he's on the phone. Morning. Oh, are you okay? Is it Mr. Steve Russell? Yeah. So, we're High Court enforcement agent, so we've been sent, yes, sent regards to an outstanding High Court writ. Well, I was solicited to speak to the case manager. Yeah. Do we trying to resolve it? Yeah. <laughs> it's been transferred to the High Court, so, so we need payment today. The resolution is the it. At the moment. I'm definitely not on his side. I don't care what the employee did. <laughs> employee versus employer? Oh, yeah. But the outstanding balance is 35000 Well, I can't raise any money today to make a payment. We can give you half an hour to see what you can do. I'm not being held to ransom. No, not being held to ransom. While the agents wait to see whether Mr. Russell can raise any funds, they start an inventory of goods in the office. <sighs> Sorry, guys, I won't get you in any photos. <laughs> ain't enough for... Ain't $35,000 ain't in here. If you want to carry on working, you can carry on working. Huh? If you want to carry on working, you can keep on working. If you take the stuff today, yeah, I'll put it into liquidation. Yeah. So no one's going to win, are they? That's the last thing we would want to do. Well, exactly. We don't want to close you down. Yeah. But then Mr. Russell makes a new claim. See, so if you look on here, the actual yeah. assets, <clears throat> I purchased them for cash yeah. from the old company. Yeah. So there's, there's nothing to be taken, really. So we'd need to see proof of that, sir. So. If the goods belong to Mr. Russell personally and not to the company named on the writ, they can't be seized. He shows them a uh. document he thinks proves his claim. Well, there's no serial numbers there with those Max, are they? See what I mean? Mm. No serial numbers. There's no proof on that document that these goods is what you bought. The inventory does not prove that Mr. Russell and not the company own the goods so the agents continue listing assets for removal close but no cigar mr russell we are never in the position that we want to take control of goods it's a last option we're not there to wreck anyone's livelihoods or put the job in threat or cause them any i want to know what exactly happened when he fired this employee like what was the Circumstances. You distress, but the harsh reality of it is mm. if you stick your head in the sand and you don't deal with it, that could be the ultimate cost. 30 minutes has now passed, and Mr. Russell hasn't managed to raise any funds. I'm not even trying. You just uh, advise the guys that need to switch off the computers and back up the systems. The agents turn up the pressure and start packing up the seizable assets. But seeing his oh, apples. business under real threat, Mr. Russell calls Vic over. He's decided to make an offer. <laughs> get ten now. Ten okay, now, and then two, get two grand a month. Can you up to two? Ten is a lot. I ain't gonna hold you. Ten. Ten in my pocket today is changing some stuff, ain't it? Two to twenty-five. 
Stewart calls the office to see whether the claimant will accept Mr Russell's offer. He says you can, you can do two. Did you say you can do two each month? Well, he says you can't do any more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, OK. All right, cheers. Thanks very much, Father. The offer has been accepted. Easily. This is an everyday person. Ten right now? I'm probably in debt. <laughs> Need it. You done fired me? I'm missing bills. I got bills. How is it you can make that payment? OK, no problem. I'll give you our bank details now. Mr. Russell makes a down payment of £10,000. He probably got more, Loki. Thank you very much. Cheers, bye-bye. Yeah, Zin, thank you, Steve. The agents then list Mr. Russell's assets on a controlled goods agreement. If you sign that, you'll print your name, you get a copy of that. <coughs> Which Excuse means me. the assets can be removed if he defaults on his repayments. Well sorted. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. All right, take it easy, all right? The case is resolved for... This was smooth, all in all. ...for now. But ten days later, it's a very different story. Mr. Russell has defaulted on his payments. Already? Well, attempt to take the stuff today. Yeah. That's it. Of course. You, you, you know you won't get another penny. It's only been 10 days. How did he default? Was it His first payment was that quick? Agent Stuart McCracken. High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor were in Merseyside. They had a writ to recover £35,000 owed by a publishing company. It's just on the list of computers. <laughs> free to pay two thousand. All right, take it easy. I don't right. need a recap. I'm sorry. Never do, never will. But a week later, Mr. Russell has defaulted on his first payment of two thousand pounds. He should have made it clear, like not like I, the first payment need to be pushed. It needs to skip a month. Let me get my money right. And now Stuart and Vic are on their way back to get this case resolved for good. Let's go. When a defendant doesn't stick to our arrangement or defaults, we are going back with the mentality of it. We're either clap payment or we will be removing goods today. It makes us more determined to get a result. Hello. Hello, Steve. You're all right. You're right. You signed a control goods agreement saying you're going to pay two thousand pounds last Friday. Yeah. You've broken that payment plan now. Yeah. Okay. Hence the reason why we're back. Right. Uh, so are you able to make two thousand pound payments? I'm not. No. I can't pay you two thousand pounds today. But you, but you agreed to pay it for last it. Friday. Well, I've got it. But I've got a choice. If you're not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to pay them. I'm going to have to remove the goods. Attempt to remove the goods. Attempt? Oh no, we won't be attempting. We will be, sir, if the payment isn't made. You're, you're just putting undue pressure on me. I'm not putting pressure on you. But, um, wait. You put the pressure on yourself. You should have said something when it was... You could have easily been like, hey, can we skip this? Why is it a week only he got? I'm lost at that. Though. You are. Oh, you, am I? Because you, you're saying you're going to take our stuff? Well, yeah. But as, long pay, as, but as long as you realise, if you take this... Well, attempt to take this stuff today... Yeah. That's it. Yeah, of course. You, you, you know you won't get another penny. With payment looking unlikely, Stuart calls the office to arrange recovery. Hi, mate. You all right? Um, he's not willing to make any payments, so we need to ring recovery. It's 12 desks, a um, couple of IMAX, and just basic, basic office equipment. Because the goods in the office would fetch a fraction of their worth at auction, Take on that. You gotta take the agents would have to clear most of it to offset a small part of the £25,000 Mr. Russell still owes. With his business at Seal. £25,000, all of this stuff gonna be gone, employees gonna be out of work. Serious risk, Vic throws him a final lifeline. Can you pay 1000 today? Can't. I've just done the wages. If you have to revise it, what, what would a new figure be? You put now? So you're offering £500 today and £500 a month going forward? Yeah. Stewart calls the office with an update. The defendant's offered £500 a month. Yeah. So can we find out what the claimant says? If not, then can we get uh, indemnity for removal? Yeah. But then Stewart hears some surprising news. Do you know how long it'll be? Okay, mate. Speak to you shortly. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
It's on his way. The claimant's on his way now. The claimant is fun to pull up? Yeah. Mm. This is like a little soap opera. Mr. Russell's former employee is on his way to broker a deal in person. What, what's the point of him coming here? Got no idea. It's an extremely unusual development. It's negative. Mr. Russell calls his accountant for her advice. We really don't understand why, why he's trying to achieve by a black one. I should resist the temptation yeah. to smack him one. <laughs> Cheers for that. She's in a bit. She's saying be very careful that you're not being set up to punch him and then he'll do you for that. They will do you for that. Yeah. Sendry, to be honest with you, it's not going to help the situation. I mean, I've never. He might come in and be like, yo, give me 12 now. We could just wipe the slate clean. You saving 13 in situations like this before, but we won't get, it, get to a violent situation. That, that I can guarantee you. While they wait for the claimant to arrive, Mr. Russell opens up to the agents about uh, yes. the case. Yes. He is an ex-employee who we parted company with 12 months ago. Um, there was a disagreement over the terms of him leaving and uh, spiralled into this. Were you friends before, Steve? Yeah, yeah. Like, on a personal level? Yeah. Before business? It's much, it's concerts and that. Right. It's sometimes harder to deal with a defendant when the claimant used to be a personal friend. You know, when they, sub when they know each other, basically. Um, it's this if he pulls up like man just give me 10 be my friend again and let's put it all behind us and we can call it you it's obviously personal he's that'd be some real liver puddling energy you'll never walk alone type energy three uh, which can make the case more complicated but it's not going to change what i'm there to do on that day i don't think i'd give up any type of Ten Money. minutes later, Stuart gets a call from the office. Hello? The client just ran beaten up here now. Right, no problem. Bye bye. <laughs> but it's not the claimant outside. It seems he's backed out and sent his solicitor instead. How's it going? Oh my god, I thought we had. I thought we had solicited negativity on the way. Yeah, I guess thanks. So you came. This is not what I was. here last Monday. Yeah. And obviously the deal was 10, which apparently was paid. That's right. 2000 a month. Yeah. Barry says, well, why can't he stick to the two grand a month? Yeah. Apparently he's stating he can't afford it. So we need to know what, what, the, what, what the claimant okay. wants us to do. Okay. So in the absence of two, he's asking for one and a half. Yeah, he's offered 500. He says he's, his accountant's not going to let him pay any more than 500 a month. The solicitor calls the claimant. Okay, thank you. So you're saying you thousand today. Yeah. Yeah. Thousand today is reasonable. And 500 a month. Stuart heads back upstairs to tell Mr. Russell the news. I need all of it. Right. He says that if you do a thousand today, he'll agree five hundred a month on going. Uh, you got and it. And then we'll, we'll leave you to get on with the rest of your day. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No problem. How is it you can make that payment by transfer again? Transfer again. Yeah. Okay. It's taken two visits, but the agents have finally negotiated a plan that Mr. Russell five hundred a month believes he can stick to. Yeah, he's accepted that. He'll make that payment. Well, thanks a lot for your well, time, mate. Soon, Take it easy. See you later. Please pay it. Yeah, yeah. Monthly. I'm sure you're, you're a nice person. <laughs> Not Elmer Fudd. I'm begging him. You're going to get tired of our faces after a while. All right, Steve. Glad, you didn't, uh, glad right. you didn't have to put on the boxing gloves. No. <laughs> see, see you later, later Steve. Mr. Russell has been given his final chance. But if he doesn't stick to his promises, the agents won't give up. At the end, we got a result. And the claimant is frustrated. Uh, the claimant still got to play lawyer fee. 35 plus lawyer fee. That's probably like five bands for the lawyer. It's been going on for so long. They used to be mates. And I think it became now it's a more personal thing than anything else. Two good friends have lost each other now over money. That's the way life is, isn't it? Yeah. You know what it is. Mr. Russell has cut, okay.
Katia has not kept up with her figure. <coughs> it had to be under police supervision. Tia, leave a like, comment.